time of gathering and a time of giving, but it's also a time that we feast upon some very comforting foods. You probably have foods that are traditional to your Christmas meals, handed down from generation to generation by grandparents and aunts and uncles. But if you're like me, you're always looking to just do that one little thing that's a little bit different and maybe introduce a new tradition into your household. So today I hope that you'll join me as I share with you an apple fritter recipe with a little bit of a twist that's sure to warm you this holiday season. And I'm gonna go ahead and tag some of my friends in this video as I'm hoping that you will show me your holiday traditions or your favorite holiday recipe and that we can keep this tradition going and share and give back to those that watch us. So thank you for joining me today, but let's go ahead and get started with this recipe because I'm sure that you'll love it as much as I do. For this recipe, you're going to need the following ingredients. And most of these ingredients are things that you should have readily available in your pantry. One thing that you might have to purchase is apples. If you're not in the habit of storing apples or you don't have apples on hand, you will need two medium apples. In my case, I'm using three smaller Granny Smith apples that I've been storing in my pantry. You also need one large egg, some oil for frying. In my case, I'm just using vegetable oil, half a cup of milk, one cup of flour, three tablespoons of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can use plain yogurt or you can make buttermilk substitute by adding just a little bit of vinegar to your two tablespoons of milk. Just a few drops is all it will take. You also need two tablespoons of brown sugar, an equal amount of white sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon each of ground ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, a quarter teaspoon of clove, a pinch of nutmeg, a pinch of black pepper, ground finely, and then a pinch of allspice, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. You also need a pinch of salt for this recipe. In addition to that, you're going to need a large mixing bowl, something to chop your apples with, utensils for stirring, and then a large heavy pan that is fairly deep for frying and a heat source. I'm gonna begin by cutting up my apples into bite-sized pieces. I've already washed these apples and there's no need to peel them. So once I've chopped them up, I'm just gonna set them to the side and we'll use them later on in the recipe. Next, we're gonna make the chai spice seasoning. So what you're gonna want is all of your spices plus your brown sugar and your powdered sugar and you're gonna mix all of those together. And just go ahead and stir those until they're evenly incorporated. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set that to the side as well. And next, we're gonna go ahead and make up our mixture for the batter for our apple fritters. Incorporate our one cup of flour, our granulated white sugar, our baking powder, our baking soda, and a pinch of salt. Just go ahead and give that a good mix. Again, just until everything's incorporated. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add in our liquids. But before we do that, we wanna go ahead and beat our egg into our milk with our yogurt or buttermilk. And then we'll go ahead and pour that into our flour mixture and go ahead and just stir that until it's all incorporated. Now this should be a fairly thick consistency. And to this, we're gonna go ahead and add in our chopped apple. And then you just want to gently fold those in, making sure that all the apples are covered with the mixture. So just gently stir them. And it might seem like because your batter's so thick that maybe you didn't make quite enough batter, but trust me, it'll be fine. All right. Now that that's all folded together, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my skillet and go ahead and add in my oil. This is a quick recipe. Altogether, gathering your ingredients is probably the longest part of this recipe. But as you can see, it's pretty much just a dump and go 
uh, type recipe, very easy to put together. This is something that small children can help you with. So if you've got your own children or grandchildren that you wanna get involved in the kitchen, this is a great time, especially around the holidays when everyone's sitting around, uh, you know, the morning after Christmas or Christmas morning, um, you know, after gifts have been opened. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can test whether your oil is ready. You can throw in some flour once it starts to brown or sizzle in the oil, you know it's ready, or you can do a drop of water, um, you know, whatever works for you. When I was growing up, it was definitely the drop of water test in the oil. Here, I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of our egg and milk mixture. And once that starts to bubble in there, then I know that my oil is hot enough. Then you can go ahead and begin to add in spoonfuls of your apple fritter mixture. And you can make these fairly large if you want to. For me, I'm gonna make them a little bit more manageable. So I'm just taking one large spoonful and just go ahead and put those directly in the oil. Now I'm gonna let these crisp up on each side for a couple of minutes. And then when they're done, I'm just gonna place them on a plate that I've gone ahead and covered in a paper towel. Now these are something that if you're like me and you live by yourself, you really don't have anybody to share these with, you can go ahead and let these cool down to room temperature and then you can freeze them and then you can heat them up later. Um, if you have a microwave, you can do it in there or you can just wrap them up in foil and put them in your oven or toaster oven for a few moments and let them warm up. And you don't wanna get them too brown. And again, you can, you can re-flip them if you think they're not quite done on one side or the other. I'm gonna turn my heat down just a little bit. And you're just gonna repeat this process, and of course, until they're all done. You want to make sure that you're cooking these long enough so that on the inside they're cooked through and they're not doughy. So you want your heat to be a medium heat, not a high heat. You don't want them to cook too quickly on the outside and not get done on the insides. If your oil is hot enough, you won't have a soggy, greasy fritter. So you want to make sure that it's hot enough to cook the things through evenly without overly browning on the outside. So medium high heat is preferable. You don't wanna get it too hot and if your temperature starts to come up too hot and you know that they're just not quite getting done on the inside, don't be afraid to turn that heat down and adjust as you go. You might need to turn it back up in a moment or two, but if your oil is just a little bit too low, then what's gonna happen is that flour mixture is gonna absorb all that oil and you're gonna have a greasy fritter. So now that we've gone ahead and cooked up our fritters, we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna just toss those in our chai spice sugar mixture here. As, as you can see, it comes together fairly quickly. It's a good use of apples, something different than an apple crisp or applesauce. Um, sure to please yourself as, along with all your guests. Yeah, that's delicious. You can probably hear the crunching, sorry. Those are fantastic, wow. That'll warm you in more ways than one, let me tell you. A quick and easy dessert that you can easily serve on any given day of the week, but whether you serve it for breakfast, brunch, or an after dinner snack or dessert with a cup of hot coffee or tea, this is a dish that is sure to delight and warm you on the inside and out. So I hope that you will be willing to share with me some of your favorite holiday recipes and make sure you tag me in that video. Just do at alone in remote Alaska so that I know that you've tagged me and then I'll go ahead and share your recipes, um, you know, with my viewers by mentioning you in the description of this video. So thank you again for watching. I wish you guys all the best. Stay safe this holiday season and be sure to check out some of my past videos here.